Hey, hey welcome, welcome to, to Mad Life Balance! balance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we are continuing the series K Theory Wonderland, and today our guest is my student, Hari Sudarsan, and uh, he will tell us about a beautiful connection between K Theory and smoothness of algebraic variety. So hi, I'll be talking about Wurst conjecture. So this is a conjecture in algebraic K-theory that was introduced by the mathematician Wurst in the year 1979. And even though certain versions and certain cases of the conjecture have been proven, the conjecture remains open in its full generality as of today. So this conjecture tells us a very surprising result. It tells us that we can study the K-theory or the K-groups of a geometric shape to help us understand the geometry of the shape better specifically if the shape has singularities or not. So for example, we can look at, a, for example, a curve and we can maybe study its K groups and then understand if the curve is a singular one or if it is smooth. So to start with, I'll be discussing homotopy invariance. Homotopy invariance is the inability of an invariant to distinguish between two objects that are homotopically equivalent to each other. So for example, in algebraic topology, let us consider the invariant F that to every topological space gives us a set. We say that F is homotopy invariant if for any topological space X, we have that F of X is isomorphic to F of X times I. Here I is the unit interval from zero until one. We also require the same property to apply to morphisms. In algebraic geometry, when we want to discuss homotopy invariance, unfortunately, we cannot use this unit interval from 0 to 1 because this is not a shape that is cut out by equations, rather one cut out by inequalities. So to discuss homotopy invariance in algebraic geometry, we replace the unit interval by something known as the affine line, which is denoted by A1. And suppose we have an invariant that takes values in varieties, we say that this invariant is A1 homotopy invariant if given the affine line here and given a family over this affine line and given the points 0 and 1 in the affine line and their families or their fa fibers in the family, this uh, an invariant that uh, takes values in varieties is said to be A1 homotopy invariant if it takes the same values on the fibers of zero as it does on the fibers over one. We can connect the concept of varieties through the, to the concept of commutative rings through a construction known as the coordinate ring in algebraic geometry. And so there is, we can rewrite the statement using commutative rings. So suppose we have an invariant F that takes values in commutative rings. We say that it is A1 homotopy invariant if given any commutative ring R, we have that F of R is isomorphic to F of R of T. One might wonder as to what could be the examples of such homotopy invariant invariance. And in algebraic topology, for example, we have pi 1, which is known as the fundamental group. And we know that pi 1 does not distinguish between two topological spaces that are homotopically equivalent to each other. We can also think about pi n, that is higher homotopy groups. And higher homotopy groups, again, by definition, don't distinguish between two topological spaces that might be homotopically equivalent to each other. In algebraic geometry, we know that we have a family of invariants known as kn that to any commutative ring r provide us with the k groups of r. And so we can, might ask the question if K theory in itself is A1 homotopy invariant. And this is what we'll now be talking about. I think I start loving the Coriolis person vibe. That's a certain yeah. vibe. Version vibe. So one might ask if K theory is A1 homotopy invariant always, that is given any commutative ring R, do we know that Kn of R is isomorphic to Kn of R of T? for every n greater than or equal to zero? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. So let us look at a counter example of this. So we consider the ring given by z of t over t square. So 
When we consider the scheme related to the string, we call it the thickening of the affine line. So if it were true that K theory is always A1 homotopy invariant, we would get that the first K group of seg of T over T square would be isomorphic to the first K group of seg of X comma T over T square. If it were true that K theory is always A1 homotopy invariant, we would have that the first K group of Z of T over T square is isomorphic to the first K group of Z of X comma T over T square. We have seen in the video about K1 that K, the first K group often contains the invertible elements of the ring. And here we have an element represented by 1 plus Tx that is contained in the first K group of Z of X comma T over T square, but it does not come from this K group. We can see here that K theory is not always A1 homotopy invariant, but there are certain families of varieties for which this is true. So let us, for example, look at algebraic curves. In the case of algebraic curves, it's a known fact in algebraic K theory that the K groups of a smooth curve are A1 homotopy invariant whereas those of a singular curve are not. In fact, it is a beautiful fact in algebraic K theory that the K groups of a smooth ring or more generally a regular ring are all A1 homotopy invariant. So one might ask if the converse statement is true, if knowing something about the homotopy invariance of the K groups of a variety can help us detect singularities in the variety and this is where Bohr's conjecture comes in. So morally speaking, this conjecture states that the homotopy invariance of K theory detects singularities. So we can study the K theory of a geometric shape to understand whether it is smooth or if it contains singularities. So let us go through the statement of Bohr's conjecture. The statement of Bohr's conjecture is as follows. It states that if we have a field K and if we have R, which is a nice algebra over a field K, where most algebras over a field K are nice, then we have that if R is K dimension of A plus 1 regular, then R is regular. For example, it is smooth over a field K. To understand the statement, we need to understand what Kn regularity is. A commutative ring R is said to be Kn regular if we have this isomorphism between Kn of R and to Kn of R T1 until Ts for every S greater than or equal to 1. Here we can see that this is a stronger requirement than A1 homotopy invariance because we don't just consider polynomials in one variable but many variables for every s greater than or equal to 1. So this statement along with this definition of k and regularity means that if we take a nice algebra over a field and we take a high enough k group that satisfies this property which is an extension of A1 homotopy invariance, then we get that this algebra is regular or for example smooth over a field k. So as I've said before, this conjecture has not been proven in its full generality as of yet, but there are certain cases which have been proven in the past. For example, in 2007, it was shown that if K is a field of characteristic zero, then this conjecture holds. In 2018, a weaker version of the conjecture was proven when K was a field of characteristic P for some prime number P. At present, there are still open questions related to the conjecture. For example, what would happen if R were a more general ring? And these are problems I'm interested in. We hope you had fun. Until, Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. <laughs>